Great day for the zoo, the sun's just rising. Hey guys, Kingpin here, welcome to the next episode of Franchise Mode. If the audio sounds a little bit different, it's cause I got a new mic, I'm still getting used to it. Not sure how close or far it has to be from my face when I talk, it's completely different, I've been recording on a headset, but this is a dedicated mic, so hopefully it sounds better, but let me know. In case you missed the very last episode, we made a gray seal enclosure, and there's four of them in here, one male and three females. They're extremely happy, matter of fact, one's already expecting offspring. You get a great view of them under here. All four of them really like to come over here because their feeders are located near the glass. I modeled the exhibit after a pier. It has above water and below water viewing. It turned out really nice. One of my favorite exhibits I've ever designed so far. A little bit of foreshadowing, but today we're going to be working up top over where that path goes. Still not sure what I want to do with this big middle section. I've got a lot of helpful suggestions though. A few episodes ago we made this arctic fox exhibit. We learned how to deal with stress because the guests really love to overcrowd them, but they're doing well now. So are the penguins. The penguins have our underwater viewing dome, which took a long time to make. In case you missed that episode, it was the first episode of the series, and it's doing really well. So odds are, if you're watching this, you saw that one too. Overall, I'm really happy with the progress of our zoo, and I'm going to be dropping the name of the zoo in the very next episode. I have a choice, but there wasn't really a good time in this video to decide. We have a lot of areas we can branch off in this zoo so far, but I think we're going to go back here and start on North America. Today we're going to be making a raccoon enclosure, as a part of the Twilight Pack. Before we get started today, I'd like to give credit to a subscriber of mine who you may or may not have seen in the comments section, Bacon Bit Builder. I took heavy inspiration from his Chinese pangolin habitat he uploaded last week, and it's an excellent video. He has an extremely interesting way of uploading, as he'll do a lot of updates of the exhibit and less commentary throughout. So if you're looking for heavy inspiration and an easy video to watch in a short amount of time, I'd highly recommend you watch his channel. His exhibits are excellent. Normally this is the point in the video where I'd ask you to like and subscribe to this video and channel. But today, I'm going to ask you to like and subscribe and watch all of Bacon Bit Builder's videos. They're well worth your time, and it's not much of a commitment to watch all of them as they're pretty short, which is good form of content. Not every video has to be 20 to 30 minutes long. As for this exhibit, this is for raccoons, so I wanted to make it inside and one of the first things you see when you enter North America. I wanted to make it inside because raccoons are nocturnal typically, which means they sleep during the day and are awake during the night, so I wanted to give them a simulated area where they could pretty much be in night frequently. As for the build itself, I want to stick to our modern theme that goes with this entire zoo, although we're not going to be using the blues and whites we've been using since this is a completely new area. This is going to be the start of our North American section, so I'm going to use a lot of this vertical wood that looks really nice and it fits in with the New World textures a lot. Another thing that I learned from Bacon Bit Builder's video is that you can include these little staff areas that the animals can also access in your exhibit. I really like it, it adds to the immersion sense really well, and it also adds more space that the animals can traverse without necessarily being right in the view of the guest. This would have been good to know before I made the Arctic Fox exhibit. And if the red foxes are the exact same as the arctic foxes at their stress level, you bet I'm going to do this. It's a really creative way to save on stress, so the animals aren't bothered by the guest. They can always hide back here if they need to. This episode is going to focus heavily on designing buildings, and one of the most important things you can do to add detail is add a little trim over the top with a different texture. You can see in the video now, I'm using two different shades of wood. I'm using the more modern one, and then the one that looks better as a base, which is the darker one. But, it looks a little, little bit strange since it's hanging out there on its own. So what you can do after that, is come back in with the exact same texture you used before, but make it off the grid, but part of the same building. This adds depth. As you can see, there's some places where the wood juts out a little bit more, and there's some places where it's not. We'll come back in there later with different materials to build with, and then add little details, maybe some signs, education boards, might be a good place for some conservation or donation bins, who knows? But just adding a little bit of depth makes the build look a lot better right off rip. This next statement might be a little bit controversial to builders, but it's personally the way I like to do it. Unless you have a detail that you 100% know you want to have in the build, just design the exact shell of the build first, and then add all of the details after. 
I don't typically like to add details as I go because that makes the shell of my buildings overall worse. For example, right there, I know for a fact I want to have something in between those uh, little pillars for the depth portion, and I know I want to have a detail, but I'm not quite sure what, and if I focused on the detail now, I might get lazy with the build and do something that I regret later. So I typically like to have details after. We haven't really faced anything quite like a raccoon in this zoo yet. In the center of primate conservation, we faced a lot of animals like this because we had a lot of intelligent species, just like raccoons, except these were mostly primates. But the reason raccoons are tricky is because they not only require a moderate amount of space, not a whole lot compared to other animals, but they need both water to swim in and climbing area. So you have to account for that when making their exhibit. You can't just make them a giant lake without an area to climb, and you can't just make them a huge forest because they're going to be missing their water. They have to have all three to be happy. Luckily, they don't need very much water and they don't need very much climbing, but it has to be there. I really think raccoons are a good beginner animal, since they teach you how to do all three aspects of the game really well. They need water, climbing, and land, and that's really the only three things an animal could possibly need besides deep diving, which I consider an extension of water. So raccoons are very cheap, they're a really good starting animal, why not build one in your zoo? As for the inside of the raccoons exhibit, I tried to model it after a forest. At first I decided to have these really large trees jutting through the entrance of the roof where the glass is exposed. I thought this was a cool effect, but I was afraid that the raccoons could climb out, and I wasn't exactly confident that I could put mesh up there so they wouldn't, because in the last zoo, we tried this exact same strategy, but the proboscis monkeys decided that they could just walk through the mesh, and I didn't really want to deal with that again. This zoo is still new, so having escaped animals every 10 minutes would not be good, so eventually I decided to scrap that idea and just use some smaller trees. When designing a forest in Planet Zoo, it's very difficult to do, because a forest in real life doesn't just have one species of plant. It's a very easy pitfall to fall into in Planet Zoo, to just make a forest made of the same one bush, rock, and tree. When in reality, you're gonna need to use a lot of different plants. I try to use as many different plants as I possibly can that all fit the exact same theme. For example, the Monstera, or Swiss cheese plant in this game, really seems to be more of a tropical looking plant, so I didn't really like that in this exhibit. I'd kept this more temperate, like a forest you'd find in North America, possibly the Midwest, since that's what I'm familiar with. I tried to add a lot of maple, birch, spruce, and oak trees, instead of trees that you'd find towards South America, despite the raccoons still liking that and having some habitat range down there. As for their climbing area, I decided to make it a little bit more colorful, since this exhibit is primarily going to be green and brown, with all the trees, rocks, and have some gray too in there. So I decided to leave the bridge a little bit colorful, so it would give the exhibit slightly more character, because color is going to be lacking in this exhibit, at least a variety of color. It's going to have plenty of green. Now you know what the build's going to turn out to look like, I think we should probably learn about the animals that are going to call it home. Raccoons are incredibly adaptable animals. They're found all across North and Central America, as well as parts of Europe and Asia. They've even been adapted to urban environments, often being found living in cities and suburbs. Raccoons are primarily nocturnal, which like I said before, means they're most active at the night. Their night vision is excellent, allowing them to navigate the dark with ease. Typically species will become nocturnal if there's high competition with predators that are not nocturnal. Raccoons, in the past, descended from animals that were hunted by wolves and coyotes, so raccoons evolved to be nocturnal so they don't have to compete for resources of these species. Raccoons are highly intelligent, among some of the most intelligent animals in the world matter of fact. They're known for their cunning nature, problem-solving abilities, curiosity, and ability to learn from experience. You'd be surprised how many animals don't learn from experience. It is very rare for a raccoon to make the same mistake twice. Raccoons are also incredibly articulate, on the level of some primates. They have remarkably dexterous front paws that resemble human hands. They use these paws to manipulate objects, and even open containers. Being adaptive, raccoons are omnivores, meaning they eat both plants and animals. Their diet includes fruits, nuts, insects, very small mammals, bird eggs, and even human food scavenged from garbage. Despite eating from garbage sometimes, raccoons have a very clean habit of washing their food before eating it. This behavior involves dipping food in water, which some scientists believe might be a way to enhance their tactile sensitivity to find prey in dark water, or it might just be a remnant of their natural foraging behavior. Nobody knows quite for sure, 
because this is very rare in the animal kingdom. Raccoons are very skilled climbers, and often are seen scaling trees or even buildings with ease. Their sharp claws and strong limbs help them in climbing. One of the most recognizable features of the raccoon besides their climbing is their distinctive facial markings, which resemble a mask. This mask-like pattern around their eyes helps reduce the glare of the sun and enhance their night vision. It's the same concept that baseball players that wear eye black use to combat the sun. This is the exact same reasons why raccoons do it. While they're often solitary creatures, raccoons can also be quite social, especially during mating season or when food sources are abundant. They may form loose groups or communities, with particularly females and their young. Raccoons are very involved mothers. In the wild, raccoons typically live for about two to three years. However, in captivity or in areas where extremely abundant food sources that can live up to five to seven years or even longer, the world's oldest raccoon on record was actually 12 years old, which is about double its typical lifespan. Raccoons have been shown to have excellent memory and can remember the solution to tasks for up to three years at a time. This cognitive ability helps them navigate their environment and solves problems with extreme efficiency. One thing you might not know about raccoons that I didn't know personally is that they're extremely adept swimmers and are often found near water sources such as streams, rivers, and ponds. Personally, I thought that was just so they could wash their food because I knew that they did that, but they have been seen enjoying a nice swim for hours on end to catch prey like aquatic fish, frogs, and crayfish. Raccoons' most recognizable trait is their adaptability, however, not their swimming. Being able to adapt to an urban environment is a feature that not many animals can claim the fame to having. Raccoons are probably among the best at this, aside from birds and other animals that can fly. Raccoons' ability to navigate the urban jungles that humans have created is extremely impressive and should not be overlooked. In many places, raccoons are protected by law, which prohibits hunting or trapping them without a permit. This protection helps to ensure their conservation and contributes to their continued presence in the wild. If you are curious, raccoons are thriving. They're nowhere near endangered. North America is a perfect habitat for them. He seems really happy so far, and I'm really happy with how this turned out too. We obviously still have to detail up the outside, but I'm a big fan of the scale of this building. I mentioned it in the last episode, but I'm really trying to tone down the size of some of these buildings. Penguin Cove is nice because it's the very first exhibit you see in the zoo, but this is a good small scale building that's not too tiny to where it's not enjoyable to see. Overall, I'm really happy with it, and I hope you guys are too. Let me know in the comments. But for some reason, one of the raccoons didn't end up coming to the exhibit, so we're going to have to search through the animal storage to find him. As you can see, we have a lot of animals stored up from various zoos. It'll help save a lot of money in the future. We got some hippos, we've got some lemurs, a lot of animals from the Center of Primate Conservation carried over. I really want to do beavers soon, too. Check the heat maps in Oh no, the one raccoon is in there. I just must have missed him. There's so much foliage in here, it's hard to see. One of my favorite details in this exhibit by far is how I used some of the autumn leaves on the ground to mimic the maple tree leaves falling out. Maybe the raccoons climbed up there or something. It's just some slight environmental storytelling, which I'm a big fan of. It looks like the raccoons have adequate space. They need a little bit more water, but that's going to be fine. Having one square foot of water isn't going to kill them. The last thing we need to do in this episode is add the final details of the exhibit. And this is where that depth we learned how to build earlier is going to come into handy. As you can see, it's right there in front of us. So, if you have an area that you know for a fact you want to detail but you don't know how, Feel free just to look through the construction, or even the facilities tab menus. There's bound to be something you can find in there that you like. Just use trial and error. I must have used five pieces in this time lapse before I found the exact one I want. And you guys are going to like the one that I found. I think it turned out really nice. Uh, most of the stuff that I used in this build comes from the New World tab, which I find works best for modern builds. I like the African and European, and even the classic one for more old school zoos, although that's not typically my style. I like to build in the modern aspect, unless I'm purposely trying to build in the past, like for a North American cabin or something that I would be using for detail. At first I wanted to use planters and come through with some foliage on the outside, but this is North America, there's going to be foliage absolutely everywhere on the sides of this build, so I didn't really think that was going to work. Instead I decided to use some of these and recolor them, these little great things, and I recolored them into the shape of a raccoon. 
I thought this looked really nice and added a cool effect. For now we only detailed the front, I'm gonna do the rest off screen, but it's gonna be the exact same concept. After that, I added some of these little plant shaders on the side because it was the exact same color as the wood we used on the top. It blends it in really well. You don't just want to have a bunch of contrasting and clashing colors. You want to have the same color, but use them kind of sparingly. Detailing is never done. If you think you're done with detailing, I bet you can find at least five more places that still need a little bit touching up. Talking about the detailing at this point would be a little bit redundant, so I'm gonna let the footage play out. I'll catch you guys at the end of the video. I'll put the time on screen. When this exhibit is done, and we can do a little walkthrough of it. See you guys then. Hope you guys enjoyed the time lapse. Alright, exhibit's finally done, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Look how many guests we have in the zoo. I'm thinking they're really liking it as well. As you can see right here, we added a bunch of trees leading into the North American Pavilion. We added some bins, some benches, and even a few other areas for our guests to get down from the seal enclosure. We added some staff paths back here, so the staff can have some easier time getting around. And this is our raccoon exhibit. I think it turned out really nice and modern, really professional looking. I think it's a lot better than much of my other work. We added a little path from the back of Penguin Cove too, so the guests don't get crammed in one area and stress out all of our animals. Coming to the inside, you'll see that we have this education station that represents the raccoon's articulate hand. Their exhibit is pretty small, but raccoons aren't the biggest animals in general, so it's fine. Off screen, I'm going to detail up the back wall of this exhibit and add some education boards and conservation things on the interior. And as you can see off screen, our raccoons actually gave birth to a lot of babies, but we only have one in here as of now. This exhibit's only big enough for three of them to be truly happy. Unpause time for a minute to get the sprinkler running. As you can see, we have one raccoon there. The second baby is actually coming through here. Guests think the zoo is underpriced, so that's good. And the third is back here in the staff area. Overall, I'm really happy with the exhibit, and I hope you guys are too. If you are happy, don't forget to subscribe to myself and Bacon Bit Builder. He's a very good content creator, and he needs more subs than he has. That's it for now. Kingpin out. <laughs>